Well, how do the chums? As you can see, I'm at my wonderful news desk inside of No Man's Sky. But what news do I have for you guys? That's a bloody good question, isn't it? Because it seems to be a little bit of a lull when it comes to the old No Man's Sky universe. Let me bring on up my laptop screen. Execute a chikpa! There it is, right there, people. So I'm over on the Tinterwebs webs right now, as you can see, and I'm on Sean Murray's Twitter or X page, whatever we're calling it, this week. I mean, it still says Twitter.com at the top, so I don't think it has changed to X, even though we've got a new logo. But scrolling down, Sean Murray has been quite active as of late on the old Twitterverse. I love that image. That freaking image is awesome, isn't it? That really does look quite cool. Anyway, scrolling down a bit further, so there's a lot of retweets. Bits and bobs going on from the old Sean. Nothing that's hinting too much towards something new. Now, the reason why I'm doing this video is you can see here that the Switch version has had a bit of a fidelity uplift and the graphics are a lot sharper now on Switch. And also, No Man's Sky was on sale just the other month for Switch, just before Echoes came out and, and during the Echoes release and also the Expedition. Now, my friend's kids picked it up on their Nintendo Switch. And I was round there just the other day. And what they actually said, the things that they picked up on, was, where are the bosses? Okay, that's, that's one of the things that one of the kids said. Where are the big bosses? Where are the enemies? Now, I pointed out to them that they're playing in creative mode. Yeah. And you don't get to really do many fights. And there aren't any bosses per se inside of creative mode it's very hard to get yourself into scuppants with freaking sentinels because they just don't fight back and the reason that they play in creative mode is they just like building the bases they like to find a nice planet find a nice place to build and they just build bases that's all they tend to do they treat it almost like minecraft in space now we're talking kids in between the age of about six and twelve is the oldest there and that's all they want to do and they're not really overly interested in playing in normal mode or going through the story. They actually said there's too much to read and there's words that they don't understand. And it'd be nice if there was voice acting. Now, some of the feedback they said when I said, why don't you play in normal mode? Why don't you do the story? That's the answer they gave. OK, I'm just re relaying what's being said, people. So I honestly think No Man's Sky doesn't overly appeal to the younger generation that are playing on Switch because I kind of feel that they kind of want games that play out like other Switch games. That's what they used to, you know, like the likes of Zelda and stuff like that. So although that they're making the graphics nicer and lovelier on Switch for No Man's Sky and other games, No Man's Sky doesn't really play like other Switch games. It's very sandboxy and it's very Minecrafty. but even Minecraft has the Ender Dragon and they're kind of expecting something similar for No Man's Sky because they're comparing it to Minecraft. I, I tried to tell them it's not Minecraft and you should have seen their faces. They nearly wanted to put the game down. When I told them there was no boss and nothing like a major challenge, especially in creative mode, they were like, whoa, why are we playing it then? They looked really disappointed, people in the view of us. Yeah, so there, there's that anyway. But anyways, for adults playing No Man's Sky, normally they want the best possible experience possible. They're going to be hitting it up on either the consoles, next gen or PC. If they're on the go, then fine, yes, play it on the Switch by all means. But as we know, there's still problems with the Switch. If you own too many frigates, if you're trying to send them out on missions, you can't actually go to settlements and there's no multiplayer. So there are drawbacks with playing with Switch. And uh, until they're addressed, and I don't only think it's really the full game per se in a roundabout way. You know, am I might be in too harsh. Sound off, let me know in the comments. But anyway, their dad had a go too on the Switch. Um, and that his feedback was interesting. He actually said, well, I've landed on every planet in the starter system. He goes, I catalogued them all, I named everything, had a blast, flew to the next system, did the same again, flew to the next system, started to do the same, but then I saw patterns. I saw the same creatures that I saw in system one, in system three. I saw the same sort of planets in system three. You know, why why bother playing? Where's the variety? This isn't what it's it's claiming to be. It's not infinite variety if I'm seeing the same freaking creatures and the same planets. And I was like, yeah, 
I get that. And I said, you know, back in the day, you, you used to land on planets and hardly odd, hardly any of them had life. And he said, well, maybe I might prefer that. So then when I do see it, it feels a little bit special. But every single planet right now has got freaking life on it. So I guess it swings and roundabouts. The younger players would like to see life on every planet, you know, or else they going to get bored. Where the older ones are like, well, where's the variety? So there seems to be something going on here where there's, it's very hard for Hello Games to please the whole freaking audience when it comes to what the audience wants. And I don't even think the audience knows what it really wants at this point in time because it's been so chopped and changed and thrown about that you can kind of see the pros and cons of both. And I'd imagine that's where Hello Games are as well. Anyway, back to Murray Watch. You can see here he's been extremely active. It's not always No Man's Sky content that he's retweeting or resharing, but a lot of the time it has been. And this is going from September 19th, so all the way through this sort of um, expedition that we're running now. Talking of the expedition, the expedition is going on for quite some time. It's a two month expedition. And actually said here, oh, here we go. Expedition 11 Voyager began No Man's Sky on ex August 31st, 2023. It will likely continue to October 27th, approximately two months, which is in line with what it says here, two months. Yeah. Okay, lovely jobs. Now, there probably is a proper end date inside the game files. I'm fairly sure it was before the 27th of October, but don't quote me on that. Um, I kind of think that we're going to see some movement inside of the depots sooner than that. I think after we lock these last two jetpack trails inside the Quicksilver store, we might see something start happening around then. Even though we have got other Quicksilver items lined up in the store, they do seem very placeholdery. They're like patches, like expedition patches, which is very unusual. Very unusual indeed. But we will see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, but however, there has been some sales happening over on the Tinterwebs. You can see here No Man's Sky on PS4 and PS5 is now $19.99, half price on PSN. That same sale has not continued over to Nintendo, it has not continued over onto Steam, and it's not on um, Xbox either. So I don't think you can read too much into this sale. I think this sale is going to come to an end on PSN. I think that the expedition is going to slowly start to wind down, but I honestly think you need to watch those jetpack trails, see when they get to about 90% on the second one, and then I think we might see something happening with the depots. I think we might see something happening over on the Twitter space, Sean Murray becoming more active. I don't know whether we're going to get another update until this expedition ends, but I'm hoping something's going to happen around Halloween. They like to put creepy stuff out around Halloween for No Man's Sky, so I kind of think that might happen. Now, going back to what my mate kid said about there's no bosses, and they seemed a little bit gutted with that, it would be nice if they added in some Sentinel bosses. I did an ideas video some time ago on how they could implement Sentinel bosses on these sort of exotic weird worlds that we've got and add in bosses that feel in keeping to these. Now a chap by the name of Sean Cruz done some amazing concept artwork of said bosses and I've got them inside of this video. If I just skip on a little bit, let me see if I can find where I start putting up his artwork and images because right Right here, I'm just pointing out there's only one alien fauna on here. But here we go. Sean Cruz's artwork will be coming up on screen right now. So here we go. These sort of things added onto these exotic biomes. I really think it could work. And maybe destroying these will unlock you some sort of gnarly modules for your multi-tool or even for the new staffs. And that's another thing with the staffs that have just been implemented. These Echo staffs. They just act like other multi-tools. I really hoped that they would be bringing in some space magic, like Techromancy. I mean, you have got all these storms that bring in giant tornadoes, or they bring in giant meteors, or they even summon the, the giant worm, or whatever. Certain planets have certain extreme weather. It'd be nice if the actual star affected the weather, so you could perhaps summon it to your favour. So if you are encountering a load of sentinels, you could bring in a tornado to knock them all away, or you could summon in a load of meteors to bombard them or something. You know, I think that could work quite nicely, because all the visual effects are there, or even electrocute them with lightning. That'd be pretty sweet but on the other flip side of that perhaps people we'd be able to sort of negate the weather for ourselves you know hold the staff aloft and stop the extreme weather or at least put a protective bubble over yourself or something for a little while you know just to sort of negate storms i think that could work quite nicely so at least the actual 
staff acts differently to other multi-tools. I mean, we've got a whole repertoire of multi-tools that are freaking awesome. And the staff does look a little bit janky, especially in the old VR, despite them tweaking it a couple of times. But anyway, that's my take on things, people, inside of the view of us. Yeah, there you go. I'll make myself a little bit bigger on the old screen for a moment. So there you go. I'm out of my news desk and I'm back in this studio. And uh, yeah, so that's me just sounding off, really. There's not a lot of news going on inside the No Man's Sky verse. I would say just watch Sean Murray's Twitter space. Keep an eye out around the time of the uh, backpacks fully unlocking. And uh, hopefully we're going to see something happen on the depots, maybe see some sales happening around then. But I honestly think we're probably going to see something tail end of October around Halloween. I could be wrong on this, though, people, because that um, expedition is going all the way up to the very limits, isn't it? In fact, let's just log out on here quickly. Let's just go over to here. Let's just quit to mode select. Boom. And yes. And uh, let's just have a look inside of game. When that's coming to an end, shall we, people? So let's just take me off the screen for a second. And uh, if I just go to a new game, so play game, and hit up new, how long is the expedition running for that? It says it's got another two weeks remaining. So two weeks remaining in my maths is another 14 days. So I'd imagine it's probably got perhaps around the 16th, 17th of October. Now, if it does come to an end around the 16th or of October, then I'm thinking perhaps we might see some sort of update in line for around the 27th, perhaps. Maybe. Give a week after it ends, and then perhaps we might see something happen. That would be my guess, people inside of the view of us. But yes, it's, it's a very odd time. Sound off inside of the comments. When do you think we might see an update for No Man's Sky? And to what sort of extent do you think it would be? I have done some polls previously. and A lot of people think that we might be in for a treat around Halloween time. And I kind of feel that could be the case. Considering all the ARG and all the lore is leading towards the Void and the Realm of Glass and the Void Mother and these new echoes. It all seems quite sinister. It seems a little bit creepy. It has got that undertone that screams out, Halloween, people inside the view of us. Anyways, I'm off. Take care. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.